what's up guys don juan so hopefully you guys can hear me okay um i bought a new gopro right here gopro hero 7 i uh, got a good deal on it i'll cover that in a different video but um we're doing the brakes on the the wife's car so um we'll just go through the whole process so 2013 lexus gs350 this procedure should be the same for 2013 through 2017 but just you know check um your vehicle for you know see how it's done so what we have here this is the parts you're going to need um or the tools you're going to need you're going to need a um a 17 millimeter socket on a ratchet a 17 millimeter wrench you're going to need this caliper tool you cannot use the standard caliper tool that pushes the piston back that goes from the side and you'll see why so you'll need one like this this one sits in the middle of the caliper if you see here and as you ratchet it it pushes it out so uh, you're gonna need a hammer you're gonna need a punch um, you're gonna need some type of small uh, pick or um, screwdriver to take a cotter pin out obviously your new rotor and your new pads these are R1 concept rotors ceramic upgraded pads um, the R1 concept states that the vein flow, like the actual flow needs to be facing forward, but I matched it up to the rotor when I took it off based off the inner veins. So just check that. Most vehicles you'll go this way so that when you put this on, it's rotating forward. Some vehicles you do go the other way. So just check. And then you'll need a dead blow to take the old rotor off because they're usually seized on there pretty good. So um, got the car on jack stands. I left my jack here just to precaution if one of the jack stands were to give out or something um, so the jack is not really holding anything up. Um, so you're also going to need a 21 millimeter socket, I forgot to mention, to take your lug nuts out. So I already broke these loose and everything, so we're just taking our socket to take the lug nuts out. five lug nuts and our socket. Use the messed up couches, got new couches and uh, haven't got rid of those yet, but uh, they're just kind of there. So we're just... All right, with this kind of brake style, it's similar to uh, Brembo's and stuff nowadays, but there's a pin right here on the back, right here. If you guys can see this pin. So um, if you were doing just pads, like sometimes you can get away with just pads, you would pull this pin out like I'm about to show you right now, and then you would slide the pads out. So there's a cotter pin right here where my finger's at. It might be kind of hard to see. It's very small. So you're going to pull that cotter pin out. So as you can see here, a very small cotter pin. So we're going to set that to the side. Don't lose it. Now you're going to take your punch and your hammer and you're just going to lightly tap the pin out. As you can see there, the pin's moving out. After you get enough way out, you're going to push down on this clip and then you can slide the pin out. And then remember the orientation of the clip. Um, it should be only be able to go one way though. Some cars may have to go both. So there goes our two. Now, if you were doing just pads, you should be able, see if you look at it here, you can swap, you can slide these pads out. So yeah, so there goes one of the pads. Remember the orientation. So this one with the clip, which I have my replacement pads right here. So the one with the clip goes on the back side. This one goes on the front. So we'll keep that. But yeah, if you were doing just pads, you could pull that out like that. Now you'll need your 17 millimeter wrench and there is two uh, bolts. There's one down here, you guys can see. And there's one right here on the top. That removes your caliper. After you break those loose, we're gonna go ahead and take a bolt bolts out. So one bolt, and then if you uh, kind of support the caliper with one of your hands, um, you can usually loosen up the other one um, easier. All 
right so now the caliper should come out perfect there goes the other worn big brake pad like i said this one goes on the outside so now we know there's no screw or anything holding the rotor to the hub but right here you can see a lot of corrosion will build up over time so it won't come off as you can see here um so that's what our dead blow is for since we're replacing the rotors it doesn't matter usually if you hit the rotor pretty hard where it's hanging off it'll just pop off so bear with me it might be a little loud i'm gonna hold the brake caliper so it doesn't fall we'll spin it try to break the other side loose As you see there, now the corrosion broke off and it popped loose. Let that hang. Oh, come on. Come on, pain in the butt now. All right, there we go. So that's out of the way. So now, old rotor comes off. And it slides right on. Now, you don't have to buy drilled and slotted rotors. The only reason I did was because I like R1 Concepts products. They make great rotors. They make great pads for everyday usage. And they even make some performance stuff. They even make big brake kits. But for the price, I got both rotors and ceramic upgraded pads for 140 bucks shipped. You can't beat that. These rotors, solid rotors like that from AutoZone were like 65 or 70 bucks a piece. Um, maybe a little bit less, I have to check again. But I know they were up there in price, so it's like I would have spent almost that much in just the rotors from like AutoZone or something. So there's no nothing wrong with getting performance pads and rotors, even for a daily. I'm gonna lay it up here up top, and we take our tool, and what we're trying to do is we're going to make sure it's set appropriately. Yeah, so now it's... All right, so now it's set to push out. So you slide this tool in. All right, so now. The tool is centered on each caliper and it's starting to push the thing back now. All right, so the piston are pushed back. So a rotor came loose. So I'm gonna take this tool out set that down so as you can see the pistons are flat now with the back of their surface and that's what you want so what we're going to do now is reinstall the caliper so we slide it over and we get our two bolts same thing support the caliper with your i'm supporting it with my left hand as i'm tightening it with my right just snug now the bottom now when you do the bottom uh, you might have to wiggle it a little bit for it to find the hole it's set on there the rotor set so now we're going to do the pads so like we said before this one the, you know just make sure you, every car is different so check goes on towards me so these slide in just like this and that's it now on some cars which I'm not sure about the Camaro, we'll check it later because we're gonna be doing the back on the Camaro. You would take the caliper and you would set the brake pads inside of it because they're not open like this on the back and you would slide the whole thing on. But because this is a newer car and most big brakes are like this where you can slide the pistons in and out. So now we take our clip, which in this car, I know it only goes one way and we take our pin and you wanna take see where the holes are so now I'm gonna push the pin so I'm gonna push the clip in with one hand as I slide the pin through take that little baby cotter pin that we had so make sure the cotter pin is not in the way of anything it is not and that is it we are done so new rotor new pads installed now from this step what we're gonna do is we're going to put the tires back on we're done and then we have to break the brakes in which is r1 concept states that uh like most manufacturers you go to like 20 or 30 miles an hour slam on your brakes 
you know, 30 miles an hour, slamming your brakes, do that a couple times, then 40 miles an hour, slamming your brakes, 40 miles an hour, slamming your brakes, and then it should be seated. Then you should be able to drive it like normal. So that is it. So this, if I remember correctly, is about a, you know, somewhere between six to a thousand thousand dollar job at Toyota or Lexus, depending on what you have available near you. And uh, as you can tell, there's literally not too much. There's only two caliper bolts and stuff. So obviously make sure you torque everything down. So I'm gonna tighten the two caliper bolts, make sure it's torqued and put the wheels back on and then we're gonna, we're done. Tires are back on. And one thing I forgot to mention is uh, always check the rotation to make sure everything's okay. So what we like to do is spin the wheel, should be no noise, no anything. All my lug nuts are just hand tight, so we'll put the car down. And the torque spec for this particular vehicle is 76 foot pounds for the lug nuts. So I'm going to take my torque wrench out, and we'll torque them, and then you'll be good to go. And that is it. Um, if you're new to the channel, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you can save a few bucks by doing the work yourself. And uh, like always, catch you guys on the next one. Peace.